before I tell you what this is about, I must confess something. Today I went hunting. And it's not the first time, but I really liked it. And I don't know, there's part of me that feels uh, really, really released. I feel free. I feel that my creativity grows for some reason. And I wanted to share this with you because it's related to this topic and I think I will encourage you to do the same. Let me show you what I captured. Yeah, it was a big beast. Really beautiful. Oh, for, sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, it was furniture hunting. Yeah, 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 for projects and all the stuff. Yeah, I'm planning to build a shelf and it's gonna come out from this, at least the flat panels, flat big panels. I'll show you in a second what's this about. But yeah, I thought why not reusing used furniture that is, has uh, this little value, but for me it has a lot of value, especially when you reuse it or recycle it or repurpose. I don't know how many names this has right now. And I think it's, it's uh, I would like to give you an example from this. Yeah, it requires more work, but it's here. I managed to buy it for 1850 it looks like I ended up with a and again very nice wood this is oak and a very thick panel it's 2.5 centimeters I think I will cut these edges I don't know if I will reduce some material here but it is actually a lot so let's see uh, it looks pretty good for the price you can see this one yeah. it's going to come out beautifully you will see in the end and inside I got the frame I think I can use the frame too what else can I reuse from here well I think I have these supports here for the desk and uh, they are in a perfect condition they are galvanized but whoever built this decided to assemble the table and then uh, dye it so nuts then this is screws where on the side for extra support they are too little and you can see they are not in a very good condition I need to use this tip, very small tip and yeah, that should tell you something you need screws with not not a countersunk screw you need a flathead screw so it will basically make some pressure on this surface then you have the, I would say the lift spring or the supports for the, in order to hold or to keep the the top plate um, against the frame and I love keeping parts of the old furniture in the new one therefore uh, I think I'm gonna use these screws yeah to support the shelves so this time I don't know if I will use something else but I think it's a good it's a good thing to do it's, it's a kind of magical the last thing is the legs they the legs are really beautiful but I don't think I will use them from anything. If you remember well, in my last video, I'll show you these guys here. These are 90 degree angle brackets that I made a stone steel. And I was giving you a hint for the next build. And then I also told you I went for some furniture hunting, uh -huh, and I loved it. So these are the two important bits that I wanted to tell you about from here. We jump to our design sketch. Well, what you can see here on the left hand side, this is how it's going to be. It's very simple, just three different shelves. I try to create a space here so she, so my partner can fit the biggest of her books. You can see here the height and also in width or probably if she wants to fit something in front of the books. Then. I'm gonna use exactly the same method as I used for the shelving unit uh, for my living room here. So screws from the sides and then a little pocket here. And the only thing is that the panels, these panels, they are very, very thick. They are instead of 18 millimeters, they are 26 millimeters. So I'm having a little bit of an issue. So this is the thickness of the panel, and this is the the height of the width of the beam. And I know that 
these 90 degree angles are they have a height of 20 millimeters so if you if you sum these two 26 plus 20 is basically 46 so I know I will have basically three millimeters out here and I want to have them inside and possibly slightly hidden so my idea is to create slots and I need to well I need to mill a slot of five millimeter depth so I want to be in the safe side so from here I also try to as a quick sketch try to see how many types of cuts I have in this uh, in this case which is three different types these are the length and times how many beams I need so the total length is around 1200 centimeters and if I try to split it in the number of beams of 2.1 meters it's going to be roughly six beams so and also here well uh, I went furniture hunting so I think I managed to get better wood at a much cheaper rate this is just what I think is going to cost me but you will see later in the spreadsheet and the only thing is that I need to work it out a little bit more and that's what we will do uh, in the upcoming videos and also the screws screws wise what's are what's the, the depth of the hole and how many screws we will need so for for the structure itself I will need 60 millimeter screws this and uh, this one and on the other side and then for the 90 degree angle brackets and also for this one at the top because here it's going to you see there is no shelf here at the top but I want to create some sort of contact surface for the books on the top I think it's going to look very nice and um, for these ones I need 30 millimeters uh, length and I think a total screws of 46 today my idea is to start with the panels it's going to take me slightly more work but I think is the wood is much better and I'm looking forward to it so downstairs I have a coffee table it's a panel it's not in a very good condition I think I will need to use some paint stripper and also sand it later but for now it's just a cutting process uh, the panel is 140 times 70 centimeters and I need to get from here three panels of around 800 millimeters so 80 centimeters times 20 centimeters and here I need to create some slots so I can fit the 90 degree angle brackets so now I would like to trim this edge gland here and for that I needed to measure the distance between this side of the machine to the blade which was precisely 10 centimeters and um, just use some straight piece of wood in my case or if you have a ruler a ruler I think this is just good enough for me and then safety, 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 and cut. Yeah, and um, that's it. So, what I did is basically trimming the, the sides. Many of them just broke. And one, two, three shelving panels. Um, the rest I will use it for something else. I'm on my way to start making the slots but I know in my in my drawing I have one two three four five six holders but then I said okay for the previous one which was the shelving unit the length was one around 1.2 meters this one is 800 millimeters or 0.8 meters I don't need so many therefore I said only four holders would be okay there are four four slots I would have just one in the middle along the length and one in the middle across the length so for that important thing is to figure out where your router bit is going to start making the holes of the side I know the diameter in my case is 16 millimeters therefore I have this is my uh, length from this reference it will be 400 millimeters which I know it's half of this one minus the radius of my router bit plus this is my router machine. You may have something different. For this one, I need to calculate the distance between this side, because it's going to be my guidance, to where my router bit starts, roughly, because this is just a slot. If it's a slightly, there's a slight offset, like a millimeter, who cares? Nothing is going to happen. So um, for that one, I know from, from whatever the, the, the router bit is going to start, 
to this wall here, there are 4.6 centimeters. Therefore, I take my 40 centimeters minus 0.8 centimeters, which is 39.2, minus 4.6. So I know where do I have to position my guidance system in order to create these slots roughly in the middle. We will measure them. Slots are properly made. I think I need to change the route a bit. It's leaving a lot of little wood bits and blisters or sharpen it. So what you see here is uh, a dry fit of uh, of the holder itself. But if you're just this is just if you were looking the shelving unit from below. So you see here well, it's going to be the beam, of course, not this one. And this here is the holder. And I'm trying to evaluate the clearance. As you can see, it is actually good. So I will leave it like this, or probably just go one millimeter deeper. It's not going to hurt me. And yeah, let's continue. Well, one more thing. Let's check that we have 39.2 towards our... Yeah, it looks like it's good, perfect. And here we have the end result on the left on the right, the top and the bottom. Let's do this for the other three. Ta-da! The three of them ready. Now it's time for some paint removal. Something I wanted to comment on is that I have these legs here from the, the coffee table I repurposed. They are very nice. They are made of oak too and i measured them they are very accurate and uh, but it's not my style and i don't know i felt really bad and i wanted to to use them somehow but i don't find anything but the barbecue so before uh, doing that i wanted to give it a chance and i posted it in the second hand shop and yeah someone got interested for for these legs uh, this person is going to repurpose them is gonna use these legs in another coffee table and uh, of course I'm giving them away for free but I'm very happy to see that every single wood bit that I bought is going to be repurposed and I also encourage you to do exactly the same I applied one layer of paint removal which is this one here for wood and it's also extra strong I apply this to this one and this one and you can see there is it has been partially removed I think it's because it was yesterday very late and I didn't let the let it uh, soak properly and also because it has been uh, varnished a few times something that I really like about this is that when you remove the varnish you are left with the ink the dye and you can see the wood grain it's a very cool effect, I really like it. All I think it could be of a huge clash with the rest of the wood because I'm not planning to dye it. So my plan is to apply a second layer, see how, how it comes out. And then I will just use uh, 80 grit sandpaper and a machine and try to uh, reach the original core, which is this one. And here you can see the difference between before and after. So before this piece of wood has been varnished at least twice. So let's say around six layers because it's very well made. But you can see how it, there in that, in that part it gets a little bit uh, wavy. Here after applying paint stripper two times this is the result. I think I will sand it down. But the wood grain is such a thing. I love it. I am already finished. I had to apply three layers of uh, paint stripper on this side. I think it was the top of the coffee table because it had so many layers of varnish and I couldn't really be happy with the result. But now it's all good. It's been a long day and I'm waiting for them to uh, dry a little bit and then I will sand them down. Next step is going to be to sand all the sides. I would like to sand them down, lay then in some of these uh, wood beams I need to cover some holes like here and here because I accidentally 
decided to use this one as a top one. You have three holes, but it's just okay. And I also made some mistakes uh, when I was cutting wood, like here. So I have some wood dust from this very wood, and I will just mix it with um, wood glue, water base, of course, and then I will cover it, wait for it to dry, and then I will sand it down. Now, I would like to sand the shelving panels, also the sides, and then I will round the edges. <clears throat> So, I need to go from here, something, to this point. And for these, there are two options. The first one, you can use a planer machine, if you have it, and you are a proud owner of one. It's not my case. Second option, you can use this guy here. It's an eccentric orbital sanding machine. I think any other should do the job too. And you should start... This is from trial and error, all right? I have started with 60 grit, then to 80 grit, then to 120, then to 180, and then I will run the edges. After that, because I will use this table, but again, I think I could scratch the wood slightly. So from 180, Whenever I finish rounding the edges, as a finishing touch, 240. And then I will apply some oil. All right, next step is to use my router table in order to create some chamfers on the sides. I'm gonna use this piece of wood in order to test which chamfer size I like, or the so-called breaking edges for that. It is very important to leave the router table as it is all the time. I can measure the height, but it's not extremely accurate, so I prefer to leave it this way. Once I find the right chamfer dimensions. I think I really like this chamfer size. It's exactly what I'm looking for. You can break the edge and you don't feel anything. It looks much better than four. Let's say even a bit safer. <laughs> so I did it in all the edges of this piece of wood and now it's not perfect of course but yeah you see it's not perfect but I think it will give a nice touch so what's next I need to fix all the issues I have so here I have a little bit to cover all the holes where did I get this this is wood dust that you can collect from your sanding machine when you sand the same wood. In this case, I just collected it from previous projects. And you mix it with wood glue. And this is how it is looking like. No worries, it will get darker when it dries. So when you apply the oil, yeah, it's going to be visible, but not that bad. Before here, you, have a, you had a cut, now there's nothing. Um, this is a wood free structure, as you can see here. This is uh, some uh, variety of pine uh, from North Europe. Is this called in Dutch? Uh, Juren. Um, this is supposed to be better than the one I used for my previous project. I'm gonna cut two pieces of wood from here and from the other wood because I still have a little bit, and I'm gonna weight it. Given the volume is going to be roughly the same, if there is a different weight, then we'll have a difference in density. Therefore, this one is going to be better. Let's say it's going to be able to support more structural weight. Oh, welcome back again. I'm here now, uh, trying to sand this down, all the filling I placed the other day. And the sequence for sanding is going to be 120, 180 and 240 grit. So after that I will apply a layer of oil and let's see how everything is looking like. Oh. And you may be wondering how is it looking like? You see one here? And uh, the other one is here. Yeah, it's better than before, but not the best result ever. This one here is a bit bigger, so let's see how it is looking like after the sanding process. 
This is looking quite good. I'm not extremely happy, but I think it's, it's perfect for the purpose. I got my oil here. Um, they advise you to use a white brush. And this one has very thin hairs, so it will help me a lot. Well, you can see the difference. It's looking amazing already. And this is the oil I'm using. Uh, it's matte, but also uh, transparent. There is no dye in it. And how to apply this? First, you need to remove any wood dust or any remains from the wood. They advise you to use a damp cloth. Whenever the piece of wood is dry, you need to take a thick brush, I would say, uh, with a thin hair, and then apply a generous layer of oil. And after 10 to 30 minutes, you remove the excess with a cloth. What happens here is that uh, you could ask me, why am I doing this right now? Well, because the curing, total curing time for this uh, particular product is nine days. I would like to assemble the panels knowing that the coating is fully cured. I just wiped off the excess from this one, you can see, and what's the difference between the one that's still soaking oil. I think I need to be slightly more generous because you can see here how the, the shape of the wood grain is already kind of dry. But this one is looking wonderful. So the plans that I have for now is to cut the wood. There you go, all the wood is cut to size. So from the left to right, here we have the remainings. This one, two, three, four big ones are the ones that are gonna be the main vertical beams. Then one, two, three, small one, one, two, three, small one, one, two, small one. These are on the sides, supporting or connecting these two beams together, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. And those six will be in front of the wood panels and also behind them. It's, now it's time to make all the pockets and for that the first step is to find the right height here. The height defined in the drawings is 21.5 millimeters and I have a piece of wood here and I'm gonna test this first. I will define here what I think is going to be the height and I will create a pocket, a little bit of a pocket and I will measure it. If I'm happy with the result I will leave the height of the saw blade for the entire process to the moment I have finished. This way I will ensure that all the pockets will have the same size. At 21.5 roughly. So I'm getting almost 24 millimeters, that means I need to increase the height of the blade. On my second iteration I'm getting 21.1, which is too little. As my drawing specifies it should be 21.5 plus 0.5, so I need to decrease the height a little bit and test again. Well, third iteration, it looks very good. Let's continue. Now, we need to mark the limits of these pockets, which is at 43 and at 248. So, I did it here, and I did it here, and I also created by reference C. It's not really necessary, but I like to have things pretty well controlled, so. And we can check if all of them are correctly aligned. So it looks like yes, I will measure it anyway, but let's start. How are we going to start? I will take the blade, I will align it perfectly here and cut towards the inside. All right. And then I will make another cut here towards the inside too. And then I will do like 10 passes, one, two, three, four, five, ten. And the rest, you will see, is going to be very easy to remove. And I will try to finish the surface, the remaining flat surface here, with a chisel. So let's go ahead. I got the two cuts, and this is the result. So I have like uh, nine cuts here, 11 here. Well, I said around 10 cuts, so it's good. How do we remove this? Well, If there's a bit thicker than this one, it's, it, it may be problematic. So, you do this, it all falls. Yeah, you don't really like this, you can keep going. And then, 
something like this is the result but I will finish this with a chisel and it will take 10 seconds no more and that's it one minute later you got it now I need to do a dry test I need to see if uh, the width and also the depth of the cut is okay but the depth is going to be later now it's just the width with a piece of wood this one is right in the edge you can see it from there so my plan for this is i will try to trim a little bit more but not much more and i want it just flush let's say <laughs> and here i am 20 minutes later and i did all the little slots one two three four five six seven times two fourteen times ten average 140 passes with the um, sled platform so uh tricks 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 and tips always try to mark the ends with the table saw so here's the first one and also the limits because now they are well defined you can just remove this and it's easier for you Ta-da! So I spent another 20 minutes. I think it's around one hour to do all of these eight small bars with two pockets. And for those four you see there, it's going to be or also like one hour. But it will be done, so it's the last thing. Now I would like to measure all of these guys, but the depth, the pocket depth, I would like to measure. Just to have an idea if I have to go a little bit farther or uh, I can leave everything like this or I could take this into consideration and, and apply the changes there. Now I am about to start creating the pockets for the four corner beams. These are very important because these pockets need to be, let's say, perfect in order to have a tight fit so we can take advantage of the structural capabilities. For that, first thing I analyzed the thickness here of the wood or how deep I managed to make my pocket. All the dimensions went from 20.88 to 21.44. That means that there is a delta of 150 microns. I need to take this into consideration. So, are we within uh, tolerances? No because it should be 1.5 to 22 but what I'm going to do is leave it as it is and try to reduce the pocket size for this beam here this one should be 21.5 then the upper limit 0 the lower limit minus 0 0.5 what I'm going to do is change it to 21 only then this pocket will be slightly smaller will be taller I'm expecting another iteration in order to leave it perfectly but that's what I want I want to always uh, end up with slightly more material than less material so I can keep using my beams another thing I'm checking now is if the pocket size which should be 43 nominally is going to be enough for these ones I just finished the first one out of four and this is what I was looking for this one and now it's very 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 nicely fit here you see it doesn't fall no gaps and you need to check now with a flat surface here so you will see now I'm checking with a flat surface, you can see that there is no gap whatsoever. Well, a little bit because I need to press a little bit there, but this is the, the result I was aiming for. I am performing a little bit of a dry fit in order to determine which wood bits are gonna go in which socket. So for this side, I think it just looks perfect. I will continue now uh, trying to adjust the other big wood beam uh, to these pockets. I think I got my first side. Everything is overlapped. That's why you see that gap in there. What do I do now? 
we decide which side we'd like to see from whatever corner you're looking for and we label it okay i have already defined both sides and which wood bead will go on each side and correspond to which uh, beam so i have labeled everything as you can see here i have achieved a kind of like a very good flatness so everything corresponds with the drawing i'm pretty happy also the angles if i just take this one they are 90 degrees all the time in all corners so quite happy i mean if this side is 90 the other one should be something like so i have checked for all of them and pretty proud of the work now I think for this particular build, this is going to be my strategy. I'm using two types of screws, although most of the connections will be done with this one, 60 millimeters length, and this one is just for the top, but I'll tell you in a second. So I'm using a 2.5 uh, diameter drill bit first to see if it if it actually goes well. And then the, the, this is the countersunk uh, bit in order to create this countersunk feature. So what's my strategy? I need to position the beans that go towards the floor somehow, but I can do it in a strategic way. First I will position this, this is the top of the shelf, I will position this bit and I will screw it in with the small ones as it should be. This one I will just insert these screws halfway. For this one, which is not really crucial for now, I will do exactly the same as for the first one with these small screws and for the last one with the big ones this way i will leave these screws in order to mark the beams that should go now toward the floor on both sides therefore i will create my structure and finally i will just go for this one so this is how i did it finally so big screws small screws big screws and small screws here but these are from the inside, so you don't see it from the sides, only from the inside. And here you have the tips from the screws coming out. You can see the mistakes I made is this one is too much on the edge. Um, also, this one here is too on the edge. So that I need to tune a little bit. Finished. Now it's time to add the, the horizontal beams. Okay, so for this uh, build, the way of assembling this. I know in my previous video uh, we, I, I mentioned a different way that, that was too big uh, of a build so I came up with that approach but right now I came up from a different one and this one relies on how well your sides are made. These ones I measured them they have perfect 90 degrees at least from my point of view so I said why measuring just why not just taking a piece of wood that will rely on this side also on the top of this surface and you just clamp everything together and I just need to make the holes now it's a uh, thing it's a rather quick thing there you go structure done in the end everything worked it's just, uh, of course you always make mistakes but everything is holding up together pretty well uh, of course because the floor you have tiles they are not very well balanced and you have a little bit of wiggling well right now there's no wiggling i'm very happy i still need to now sound the structure but first let's have a sneak peek of the room in which i was thinking to place this uh, bookshelf which is my partner's uh, piano room and uh, we still are not very sure if we want it there or just uh, in, a, in a different uh, place but you can see how there's a great contrast between the wood panel and the wood beam Although, I'm going to show you in a second that with some aging of the action from the UV light, this will get slightly toasted and we will compare this panel with, with, the, uh, with the shelving unit that I have downstairs and you will see that this, the combination is much better. Although, this is not bad at all. So, this is what I had in mind when I chose the wood. 
you can see how this color is it's exactly the same material but this has been here for long and i believe that because of the uv uh, the action of the uv light uh, this uh, has aged a little bit and now it looks toasted and i love it and you can see that there is no much contrast between these two or you can also see this corner here so let's go and start sanding the structure I have finished sanding just this size, the junctions. Um, the effect, like for example in this one, is just wood porn because everything lies at the perfect height and you can see that the interfaces are barely there just because of the change in textures and these edges but otherwise it would have been amazing. So I love it and the effect from the distance, this texture, it's just beautiful. That's what I like from this build. Now, all like this. Next step is to disassemble this thing. I'm gonna label all these longitudinal beams and I will sand them like separately. And then I will proceed with the first layer of lacquer. I am labeling them based on this drawing, but there is a question that arises here. Uh, what's the orientation of each, each horizontal beam and where should I put the label so I remember to put everything exactly in the same place. So what I'm doing here is adding this BF of being front uh, type 1 and number 1 uh, right on the left. Everything is oriented towards the left side of my shelving unit. That's how my naming convention is going to follow. And then the other thing is in order to, to identify the top, I'm doing things like this. I'm saying beam front blah 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 and then I, I just create an arrow pointing towards the top and specify the top. Now what about this side of the structure? How do I mark them in order to uh, remember exactly the same position as before? Well if we take if you take this one as an example, I have marked a dot at this point here. And then I have the same in the counterpart. And by the orientation of the screws, you can see how they are distributed. You just know that this is the right place. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is all the structure disassembled and all the screws needed. In the end, I have chosen to uh, use a hundred. 20 grit sandpaper for these flat surfaces and, all, and then for the corners I'm using 180 and the finish is just as expected I mean it after this one layer of lacquer is gonna cover all the imperfections and then 240 grit paper will, will be used see here I am inside my house just because I wanted to uh, lacquer these pieces of wood in a cleaner environment Back to Joe. So I took these guys. Uh, I think I spent two hours and a half sanding, and then another two hours and a half to apply two layers of uh, lacquer. And now we am about to apply the third layer. But first, I am going to sand it down with 600 grit sanding paper. I know I said 400 or 240. But um, because of the smoothness of the surface, I have decided to change it to a, a greater, a smaller grid. So I will remove this material and I will leave it very smooth. Now it's time to start with the final assembly. So just wait right there because this is going to be fully assembled. Well, I'm talking about the frame right now. And ready it is. So, structure is ready. Uh, with the labeling, I must say it's a pretty big mess, uh, especially because I didn't realize that you can easily swap these two with my naming convention. And this one, you can just uh, do this, but the other way around. So, I was drawing a dot, but I need to do the method with a top and an arrow because this one went uh, fairly better. Now I'm gonna go to the place where I'm planning to place this, at least for now, and place the panels for the first time. There it is. You may wonder why it is upside down of these two beams in there. 
And this is basically because that's the way I'm going to use in order to place the panels. Why? Well, because these two beams will lay at the same height as the what will be the top of the panel, so everything will be perfectly leveled and I don't need to use any additional device. Apart from that, there is a gap of 2.5 millimeters on each side. So how am I going to define this? I 3D printed these templates. So you can see the numbers 10, 15, 225. It should be 1, 1.5, 2, 1, 2.5. And of course the model is uh, in the description so you can download it for you. And I thought that I could create many of these ones in different with different uh, gauges. Uh, so you can collapse them this way and put them like in a big shaft or something. So yeah, let's use these ones. We need 2.5 millimeters. Let's see how this works. It's the first time I'm testing this. Quick update. I must say that due to the manufacturing tolerances and also assembly tolerances, I no longer have 2.5 millimeters here. The gap, of course, that was nominal. And so I have to use uh, 1.5 millimeters is what I can fit here and here. So two sides is just enough and the rest should follow although you might see imperfections you can see the line here is getting a bit smaller to the, towards this side although for the long length of the panel is keeping a good distance i have designed this thinking that any tolerances will be absorbed by that gap and i know no one's going to see that unless we put it upside down and we analyze this so i'm pretty happy with the outcome as a next step, we need to mark and place these beautiful brackets in all sides, top, bottom, and all sides. It's a pity that no one's going to see them. Finished. Look at this. It looks pretty nice from the bottom. But now, before I forget, I'm going to install these pads. I just managed to cut them from a big pad. And they are self-adhesive, so I think they will do good. It was a good tip from the previous post. Thank you. Well, it looks like I ended up as I didn't want to. I should have placed first the bottom one and then the middle one and then the top one. But on the good side, I didn't really need to use this space while I was tidying this one. So, yeah, I'm lucky. <laughs> then, look at this uh, pads. Actually, they, they give the shelf a very nice and smart look, although no one's going to see them. 